On this week's video, we are headed to Texas, but not actually Texas. We're uh, like a place close enough to Texas to be considered possibly Texas, because we're talking about 10 films that are either clones or ripoffs of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre films. Um, we're going to be skipping over some of the more obvious entries, like, say, House of a Thousand Corpses, which is basically a, a remake of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, because I'm probably going to be covering that series in its own timeline at some point. And uh, there might be some other films that I don't cover because I've covered them already in other stories or um, plan on using them for something else. But these are 10 films that are inspired by or ripping off The Leatherface Man. Okay, so number 10 is a weird one. In 2016, a movie was released called Playing With Dolls Bloodlust. It was the second film in a series of three films with the most recent entry back in 2017. You could somewhat call it a chainsaw ripoff in the fact that the main character wears what appears to be a stitched up skin mask, but the actual storylines are pretty different. <laughs> I'll probably most likely do a timeline of this series at some point in the future, so I'm not going to get too deep into a recap of this one, but you may ask yourself what it's even doing on this list. Well, it seems as if this film was actually released in the UK under the title Leatherface, The Legend Lives On even though it has no connection whatsoever to the Texas Chainsaw series and the character and the people that rented it were a little bit ticked off about it. 2011 saw the release of Madison County, which might as well start off with the ending of the original Chainsaw. A young blonde girl in the back of a pickup truck who obviously went through something, although she's quickly taken out. So, there's your standard bunch of young people going on a journey into the rural areas of their state that they never go to. You know, like everyone in movies does. There's your standard bunch of weird locals there as they try to find an author of a book about a bunch of local murders. Eventually, a dude in a pig mask shows up to start the violence, and pretty soon, James here is held captive by the whole clan and rescues that girl from the beginning, and they drive away in a pickup truck, leaving leather, I mean pig face in the road. I, I don't feel bad about revealing the ending of this movie because it's not really worth watching all that much, so you're, you're just not missing anything here. Probably the most recent film on this list is 2017's Escape from Cannibal Farm. So stop me if you've heard this one before, but a family goes for a nice quiet drive through the countryside, although it's the British countryside this time. If you were hoping for likable characters, sorry. This family constantly bickers and shouts at each other until they reach Hanson's farm. Get it? They encounter the cannibal family that lives there and includes this guy. He's wearing an apron, wears a mask made out of skin, and of course, a chainsaw. There are some twists in that the stepdad is in on it, although I love how easy it is to break the cage here, yet no one ever tries to get out. I mean, one guy does earlier in the front of the cage is electrified, I guess, but Clearly, the rest is not, so break break the damn thing and get away. It's not all by the numbers. I mean, they, they kill the Leatherface guy about halfway through, but I'll be honest, it's, it's a bit of a chore to get through, and there's some pretty ridiculous plot turns as it gets to the predictable finale. 2009 brought us Albino Farm, and do you think there's a carload of college kids on a trip? Yes, there's a carload of college kids on a trip. Do you think that they break down when there's no cell signal? Yes, they break down where there's no cell signal. Is there a harbinger? Yes, there's a harbinger. Do characters make the dumbest decisions? Yes, they make the dumbest decisions. Is there a creepy family of inbred cannibals that take them hostage and then torture them? Yep. Could the people have easily gotten away if they weren't busy arguing with each other for no apparent reason? You got it. Okay, so this follows all the rules of every hillbilly horror clone out there, although this one is probably a little somewhere between Chainsaw and maybe the hills have eyes, I, I guess. So just, just imagine those movies, but pretend that you can't see anything because that's the whole laugh half of this movie. There are small roles for Howard Stern crewman Richard Christie and wrestler Chris Jericho, but they each only have a few minutes of screen time, so I guess if you're a fan of either one, I mean, those couple minutes might be worth it. I don't know. So, Butcher Boys was released in 2012, but it was also titled Bone Boys. Sounds like a completely different movie. 
and is the unofficial Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 5, after The Next Generation. It was written by Kim Henkel, who co-wrote the original TCM, and also wrote several other entries, and although copyright obviously keeps them from calling it a sequel, well, it, it kinda is. It's set in Texas in 2011 and follows a standard but slightly more annoying than usual group of teens who encounter a brutal group of cannibal killers. There's a big leather face sized guy and you see this was, this was written as an actual sequel and then changed once it wasn't picked up. So instead of a family in rural Texas, we get a gang in an urban area, but this is basically the elaboration of that Illuminati type group that we saw at the ending of Chainsaw 4. The Butcher Boys have some sort of influence in the city and are left alone by other gangs and police and there's even Evil Bong's Rabbit playing a Dennis Hopper style character looking for his daughter, although I don't think Dennis ever recovered himself in Crisco. There's even a dude with a chainsaw at one point and a dinner table scene that's escaped by crashing out the window and it features a bunch of cameos from Texas Chainsaw regulars and is about as close as you can come to being a remake without actually being one. Blood Salvage is from 1990 and features a handicapped beauty pageant winner and her dad is Nancy's dad and I've called him Nancy's dad every time he's shown up in my timelines and John Saxon has like 198 acting credits so you'd think I'd call him something else but, but no, he's Nancy's dad. For some reason Evander Holyfield is in this too for like three seconds. Anyway, the Evans Family RV breaks down, so maybe this belongs in the Hills Have Eyes ripoff list, I don't know. But there's a clan of rednecks and they kidnap people in order to farm their organs for the black market. There's this big oafy guy in an apron, of course, and they have a pet alligator, so I don't know, maybe it's a maybe it's a buried alive ripoff. Jake here has an odd obsession with April, and Mr. Hand plays a role, and and they keep the family locked away like livestock. Of course, the local authorities are in on it, and Jake's motive is to actually heal April's legs so that she can walk again, so that he can marry her. And this one definitely throws some curves near the ending, killing off some characters that I didn't expect, and it's definitely set up for a sequel, even if one never came. 1987 gave us Slaughterhouse, which kicks off right away with introducing us to Buddy, who, to no surprise, is a heavy-set, mentally-challenged, inbred killing machine. There's an opening credit sequence with actual scenes from inside a slaughterhouse in case you wanted to skip eating meat for a while. Old Lester Bacon is in danger of losing his pig farm, and we see some familiar looking accessories around. And when the farm is condemned, Dad, who's sort of a fill-in version of the cook, and Buddy decide to kill the authorities responsible. And then they start the killing. There's some intentional humor, and I guess some unintentional, like this guy who's trapped because I guess he doesn't want to take two steps in like any other direction. There's also a lady who I guess gets so scared of a man coming after her that she just forgets to start her car and drive away. And everything ends up with our main group of teens daring each other to go to the farm for a final showdown. And there's some pretty chainsawish moments near the finale but it's also set up for a sequel which never came. Back in 1981, just before Christmas, just before Dawn was released. It starts off with an overweight, squealing hillbilly killer who, okay, wow, jams his machete through this guy's no-no zone. By this point, you know the drill. There's a bunch of college kids on a trip together out into the wilderness, including Star-Lord's grandpa and the guy who stole Pee-Wee's bike. Ed Hawken is in this one too, and the kids come across a clan of possibly inbred hillbillies out in the woods. They're not the problem though, this guy is, as he attacks those on his territory. This one's better acted and with sharper writing than most of the entries on this list, but it sure does take a while to get going. It's probably the least chainsaw inspired of these hillbilly horror flicks and it turns out that our killers are actually twin brothers. This one's worth watching, but be warned that it's the slowest moving flick here, although the villain's death is, I mean, it's, it's pretty spectacular. All right, so here we go. Night Killer came out in 1990, and I've been looking for a reason to talk about this movie forever. Why? Well, first of all, it's written and directed by Claudio Fragasso, the mastermind behind Troll 2, and is just amazing. It's about a masked killer with a rubber claw glove that can punch straight through people. 
It features opening music that might as well be Seinfeld outtakes. And after Melanie is attacked by the killer, she gets amnesia and becomes a badass. Like, this guy is trying to sexually assault her, so she holds him at gunpoint and forces him to strip, leading to the greatest scene of 1990. Hey, bud, what happened to your clothes? I got molested in a little boy's room. This same guy ends up saving her life, but I guess is also terrible to her and locks her up with the killer continuing to just somehow keep jamming his hand through people. I, I think the claws are supposed to help, but he doesn't slice through. He literally just rams his whole fist straight through them. But then again, this film is in a world where you can shoot a gun in a mirror from just one foot away and all it does is crack the mirror. And hotel managers who are swayed by a whole one dollar bribe. An interesting tidbit is that the film was originally just a thriller with very little violence and Bruno Mattei was brought in to shoot additional gore footage, so I guess he's actually to blame for all the hands through bodies. So it's a movie about a crazed stalker wearing a monster mask and wearing a sort of Freddy Krueger glove, so why on earth do I have this on a Texas Chainsaw Massacre ripoff list? Well, it's because the film is Italian, of course, and in Italy it was released as the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 for some reason. It really has no connection to the franchise, so that title is really perplexing. And speaking of perplexing, the ending of this movie needs to be seen to be believed. From 1980, Motel Hell is probably the most revered film on this list, and it's also the most satirical. It has the chainsaw standard of a hillbilly family who sell meat, and guess what the secret ingredient is? Vincent here has a sister, a little brother who's a police officer, and keeps people in his backyard to harvest. He removes their vocal cords to keep them from screaming, and they meet an assortment of guests, including a baby Cliff Clavin. It's definitely more light-hearted than the usual, and feels more like Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 than the original, and when Vincent takes on Terry as sort of a surrogate daughter, or wife, or both, I, I guess, she starts to uncover the family secrets. Wolfman Jack plays a role, and so does this man's beard. I'm not, I'm not sure why they needed this guy to have a full beard, but his fake one is pretty spectacular. The ending features all their victims escaping and climbing from the dirt to get their revenge, and here's where most of the chainsaw comparisons come into play. Vincent takes on his brother while wearing a pig mask, and they have a saw battle for the fate of Terry. This film is an absolute blast, and was actually probably an influence on the comedic aspects on the second Texas Chainsaw Massacre film. It's gained a huge cult following and is pretty revered amongst the horror crowd, and its spot is well earned. So there you have it, it's 10 movies that are either inspired by, or rip off, or sort of remakes, or movies that stole the title from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre series. Um, a lot of these were pretty bad, most of these were not that great. Um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies on their own are pretty specific films, so to kind of steal that formula uh, without the charm of what made that film great in the first place, it doesn't really work. Um, a couple of these, though, I would definitely recommend. Uh, if you haven't seen Motel Hell, I mean, get on that. that that's one of the all-time classics, um, and there was no way I was going to do this list without that being number one on there. Um, and, and watch Night Killer, just because I, it's just ridiculous and fun. Um, I enjoyed that. But most of these films on this list, I, they, I didn't really enjoy. They, there really wasn't that much great on here overall. Um, well, there you go. Let me know if you've seen any of these and if you like them or if you have some other Texas Chainsaw Massacre ripoffs that, that you know of that I missed. Let me know right down below here in the comments. Um, and then, of course, do the whole like, subscribe, blah, 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 do all that stuff that, you know, I'm obligated to say. Um, and check out the Patreon page as well, too. Thank you to the patrons for helping keep this channel going. And thank you for watching as well, too. And, um, you know, I'll see you guys uh, probably another week or so for another great video. Thanks. Bye-bye.